UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research. Unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Ralph Irvin, along with Javrina Seferi. Coming up on today's show, we're going to take a look at the women's rowing team and then take a look at UCLA diving. UCLA has a lot of exciting events. Let's take a look. Justin Price is in his first season as an assistant coach with the UCLA rowing team. A 2006 graduate of UCLA, he also rowed for the Bruins. He spent the last three years as an assistant coach at Notre Dame, where he also earned his de law degree. Kristen Fitzmorris is a senior from Del Mar. She advanced from walking on to the UCLA rowing team to becoming a captain this year. Thank you both for joining Thank us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. You both have uh, gotten underway with training. What are you thinking about this year? Well, we're off to a great start. You know, we got a great group this year, a nice large group. Uh, we got great team chemistry. We got a great group of freshmen in. Um, you know, we're off to a great start. We're looking forward to great things in, in the spring coming up. Uh, we're working hard in the off season right now. Um, just had a couple fall races this past weekend where we had some good success, got off to a good start. And uh, we're looking to just keep building throughout the year so we can have a strong season in the spring and get back to the NCAA championships. Kristen, you've had your final off season as a Bruin now. In your final season, are you excited for it? Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, the freshmen are a great group of freshmen. So I think definitely the most exciting part about being a senior and this being my last year is really seeing that Bruin rowing is going to keep going and it's going to be a great couple of years after this. So, The team has advanced to the national championships two out of four seasons. What are you guys going to do this year to you know, make sure that UCLA is at the top spot? Well, we're just going to keep working hard and, and, and do what, what's got us there in the past. You know, we've had a, a little bit of trouble the past couple of seasons. Things haven't gone according to plan, but uh, we've been there. You know, it was just a couple of years back that we were, we were there, two years in a row, and uh, we're going to look to get back there. So we know what it takes. We've been there. We've got a great group of athletes. We've got the tools. We've got the potential. We have everything we need to do. We know what we need to do. It's just a matter of executing and uh, getting good, consistent work between now and March and all the way through May to get back to the championships. And Kristen, it, it really is a lot about just hard work and putting in the time, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, last year, I think a lot of us were expecting last year to be a really powerful year. Um, started out great in the fall. We had a couple injuries. Um, we dealt with it. We got through. Still had a pretty strong season. But definitely this year is the year for us to really come back from that and really take the power that we were hoping to apply last year and play with it this year some more. Now, Justin, you were a competitive rower, and then after graduation, went right into coaching. How was that transition for you? Well, you know, it was it was an interesting one. Uh, the main thing I try to do as a coach is I, I always draw on my experiences as a student athlete, and I always think about uh, my experiences as, as a rower and as an athlete, and the things I thought about, and, and the way my teammates reacted, and, and the dynamics of the group uh, as an athlete. And, I, and I'm always trying to put myself in, in the student athlete's shoes. Uh, to get through to them the best and, and, and just you know, make sure I'm, I'm thinking about what they're thinking about so I can, can, can sort of get through to them the best, best way and have that connection. And 
it's been pretty smooth. And like I said, I just you know learned from everything that I learned when I was an athlete, and, and I draw from those things, and uh, it's worked out great. I would imagine as a first year assistant, you kind of are hoping that the student athletes will come to you with questions, but sometimes you've got to go and offer yourself up to answer the questions that they're kind of afraid to ask. Well, definitely, you know, it's uh, it's, it's a challenge, but it, but it's a good one. And, and being in my first year here, it's been it's been fun to get to know the team and, and get to know all the girls on the on the team and them get to know me. And, and we've developed a great relationship so far, and and hopefully we'll keep keep growing, keep building, and uh, they'll be able to learn a lot from me, and we'll be able to to accomplish all of our goals. Kristen, you used to swim in high school. How did you get involved in rowing? Um, actually, my dad went to UCLA, and my mom both went to UCLA. My dad played baseball and basketball in high school, and he wasn't quite good enough to go on to like a Division I sport in those. So he came to UCLA, you know, he's 6'4", walking around campus, and the coach just grabs him and says, go out for rowing. So he did rowing for four years here, and he was a letterman for three years, varsity eight, seven seat. And so when I came here, I kind of had the same situation. You know, I was swimming in high school, and I didn't really, I wasn't good enough to go on to Division I, so I knew I wanted to still want to do sports. So I was like, my dad did it here, so I went out for rowing. And that, the rest is history. Yeah. Now, Kristen was a walk-on to the program, and that's not unusual. You have a lot of walk-ons come into the program. How do you develop that talent? Really, how do you spot raw talent to encourage them to walk on? Right. Well, well walk-ons are a huge part of our team and a huge part of the sport. It's really, really a unique uh, collegiate Division One sport in that sense is that, that we go out on campus and we just look for raw, talented athletes. And mm -hmm. many of them have never tried the sport before. They don't even know anything about it. Uh, but that's sort of my job is to teach them everything they need to know. And um, it's a sport. It's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of technical skill involved, and you need to be really technically sound. But at the same time, the main, the main thing is you've got to have the raw engine, you've got to be a talented athlete, and you've got to have the discipline to work hard. If you have those things, we can teach you everything you need to know. So every year we go out on campus and we, and we try to find the best, most talented freshmen that, that were great athletes in high school, but just, you know, for whatever reason, aren't, aren't uh, playing a sport here at UCLA. We offer them the opportunity and, and they grab, on, grab a hold of it, just like Kristen did, and they're very, very successful. And we often have uh, former walk-ons that make our Varsity 8, which is our top boat, and uh, mm -hmm. help us go uh, as fast as we can and, and be one of the fastest teams in the Pac-10 and one of the fastest teams in the country. So it's just about having, having the, the good work ethic and discipline and, and being a talented athlete, and you can succeed. In, uh, I would imagine that when you go and talk to someone and the possibility of out of nowhere they can become a scholarship athlete, it must just completely surprise the heck out of them. Right, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> tremendous opportunity and, and you know, it, it's like I said, many of these, these girls come to school not even having thought about it before. You know, some of them have an idea, oh, I know that, that uh, uh, Division One rowing you know, often takes a lot of walk-ons, and, and, mm -hmm. but some of them have never even heard of the sport. They, they don't even know about it and they just, I might come up to him one day on campus and say, hey, you look like a tall, uh, <laughs> tall athlete that, that, that looks like you have a lot of potential. Would you be right. interested in trying a sport? And they say, I would love to wear UCLA in my chest and represent the best, the best university in the land and be as good as I can be. So. Kristen, you're actually team captain this year. Can you talk about some of your <laughs> responsibilities? Um, being team captain is really a motivational position. I mean, we do a little bit of administrative type stuff, but mostly about, it's about getting your athletes to realize that there's another level that you have to accomplish, that there's a level of discipline that we have to really follow if we want to make our goal of going to the NCAAs this year. And it's about getting those girls to, you know, when times are tough, realize that we all make a choice to be here and we all want to do our best and to really support each other and to really realize that we're all here for the same goal. So. Does it make it hard on you? I mean, I would imagine you always have to be ultra positive and kind of keep everything in perspective so that you can make sure that no one gets emotional on a negative end on the, right. on the team. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it can get difficult, but really it's a wonderful position. Like, it makes it easier for me sometimes, actually, because I know that everyone is trying so hard because I was in their shoes three years ago, two years ago. So I know exactly what they're going through. I know how they're feeling. And I know because when I was a sophomore, a freshman, and a junior, I was trying my hardest and I really wanted so much for the team that it's easy for me to be positive with these girls. Now the rowing team operates so differently from just about every team on campus because one, you practice really early in the morning <laughs> and two, your practice facilities aren't exactly real close. Yeah. 
Right, yeah, we're a unique breed. So we, uh, we, we practice the, on the water in Marina Del Rey. So we, we, uh, the girls get on the bus every morning and we drive down to 405 at uh, 545 in the morning. We get down and, and get to the water just after 6, 6 a.m. And uh, as the sun's coming up, we're getting to work on the water, putting in the meters, logging the miles, and, and doing the good work. And it's, it's uh, you know, away from, from the rest of the student population. Nobody really sees what we do and, and all the hard work that we put in. And, uh, and getting ready for race day. So, uh, yeah, we're a unique breed and a hard-working bunch. And how is that for you as a student athlete getting up at that time of day? Well, it's one of those things like it's a sacrifice you have to make. You really have to learn how to incorporate that into student life. You have to mm -hmm. learn when to say no to going out at night and learn when you have to do your homework because you were practicing all morning and get to bed early. And sometimes that makes it hard, but it's definitely worth the sacrifice. I would imagine with the recent time change, it's a lot easier because at least now you've got the sun up when you start your workout. Exactly, yeah. The <laughs> daylight savings time was a, was a welcome sight for us. So now the, uh, the sun was up uh, the other day when we, when we came down to the boathouse instead of uh, having to put lights on the boat. Because uh, before daylight savings, it was dark as we were getting the, getting the boats down to the water. So we had to get a little bit of light to, to help the other boats see us out there. But now we have uh, sunshine greeting us when we get the boats down. So it's nice. When the team is not on water, are there any other type of conditioning that you guys do, Coach? We, 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 do, uh, we do work on the rowing machines or the agometers on campus, which are uh, over at Drake Stadium. So we, we, uh, we're on those two to three afternoons a week, and, and that's, just, uh, that's where we put in a lot of our fitness training and a lot of the grueling hard work, and it's just about, again, uh, developing our aerobic fitness and strength. And we also uh, are in the weight room doing strength and conditioning with our wonderful strength and conditioning staff. Uh, twice a week uh, after, after our morning practices, uh, lifting weights. So the, on the rowing machines and, and in the weight room is a huge part of our, of our fitness training and helping us be as strong and as fit as we need to be to achieve our goals. After competing as a swimmer like you did in high school, how much have you changed in the years being a part of this program and working as hard as you have to to be in this kind of physical condition? Um, I think that when I was a swimmer in high school, you know, I was always in great shape. It's mm -hmm. a, definitely a cardio sport, just like rowing is, um, which I think definitely helped when it, in the transfer. Um, the difference between me as a high school athlete and me as a college athlete is really having learned how far I can push myself. I mean, what a lot of people don't understand about rowing is it's an endurance sport, and the best athletes are the athletes that can hit that red line and keep going, despite how much it's hurting. So when I was a swimmer, you know, the distances are a lot shorter. The longest race I did was probably two minutes. And the, our spring season racing is seven minutes, six to seven minutes long. So it's, it's, a, it's a sprint for that long, and you really have to learn how to hit the red line and just keep going. And you learn that you have a capacity to do that that you really didn't understand you had before. Justin, Kristen, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for having so much. me. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Justin Price and Kristen Fitzmorris for joining us here on UCLA Bruin Talk. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the UCLA women's diving team. It's all ahead right here at UCLA Bruin Talk. After these public service announcements. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Welcome back to UCLA Bruin Talk. Coming up, we'll take a look at the UCLA women's diving team. But first, Javrina has our Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Caitlin Sather of Women's Volleyball as our Athlete of the Week. After redshirting last season due to surgery, Caitlin has returned stronger than ever as a senior leader for the Bruins. In a recent road game against Cal, Caitlin brought in 11 kills and 12 digs. She powered through the rest of the weekend in a game against Stanford to record 20 digs and 14 kills, three of which gave the Bruins a wide lead in the fifth period to take her to the win. The weekend victories bolstered the team rankings and brought head coach Banikowski a 1100th win. Her team high 12th double-double at the Stanford game achieved outside recognition as well as earning her a career first title of Pac-10 Athlete of the Week. Congratulations, Caitlin, and good luck to the rest of the team. If you would like additional information about UCLA Athletics, 
You can call our fan phone line at 310-825-8575 or you can visit us on our website at www.uclabruins.com. Tom Stevens is in his 12th season as the head coach of the UCLA women's diving team. Prior to coming to Westwood, he was the head coach at Fordham. He was also a four-time All-Ivy League diver while at Yale. Laura Wynn is a junior from Lafayette, California. This past summer, she finished 26th in her first senior national appearance, diving from the platform. And last year from the platform in Pac-10s, she was the runner-up. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Training has begun for swimming and diving. In fact, you're getting set for uh, first meets. How do you feel about the uh, team coming up this year? Uh, we're, uh, we're very young. Um, Laura is our only returner, so we've got a, a junior transfer who, um, who is, is really coming along and, and two freshmen who uh, you know, are acclimating, I think, to, to, the, to the level of work and the type of work that you know, is required when you get to college. So uh, the, the group is great. I, 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 the dynamic is, is sensational. It's very positive. Uh, we've got, um, this is probably one of the hardest working groups I think I've ever had. Uh, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. It, it really is a pleasure to go in and work uh, hard every day. And after your busy summer, how, how do you feel about the year coming up? Yeah, I feel great. Um, we've, like Tom said, we've been working really, really hard. And I think it's interesting because since we are such a new team, we can really kind of create our own new identity this year, and I'm really excited to see how the season plays out. Coach, you've been here for 12 seasons. Mm -hmm. What keeps you coming back? <laughs> well, it's UCLA. I mean, it's, uh, it's, that's a pretty easy one. As long as they'll have me, uh, I'll certainly stay. I really do believe this uh, in, in that it is the, absolutely the best place in the world to, to not only be an athlete, but to be a student. And, and, and the, the level of support and, and access to, uh, you know, programs and, and uh, events and, and opportunities is, is greater here than I think it is anywhere else. Well, Laura, you're in your third season under Coach Stebbins. Mm -hmm. How have you grown as a diver and what have you learned from uh, his experience as well as his coaching experience? I definitely have learned a lot. Um, where I am now from where I started is probably like 150 percent better. Mm -hmm. um, what Tom's coaching style for me really works because he always has a plan and there's always a process and he has a plan for me each day, each week, each month, you know, all four years I'm going to be here. I'm a, I'm a math major so I'm a pretty logical person and having that, you know, <laughs> plan laid out for me really helps me as, a, as an athlete. Well, I would imagine as a competitor, especially in what's essentially an individual sport, you might have your good days and you're ready to just jump ahead and progress and grow and sometimes that plan keeps you a little bit in check so that you can do things in the right way. Um, are you, are you, I, would, I would say that it just keeps you from getting ahead of yourself so that you oh. don't get too far out in front. Right, absolutely. Kind of, you have to take it one step at a time. Now, I, I, that's really the whole uh, methodology behind having the plan for, for the individual athletes. Well, well it is. And, and, the, and the, really the key in our sport is repetition. And, and, and doing a lot of great repetition over time kind of equals success. And, and so while there are days where it might seem very easy and kids feel like, oh, I'm really ready to go, I'm really re you know, sometimes they're not quite, and physiologically they're not quite ready. The, 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 the two sides are, are really getting them ready both physically but then also mentally and, and being able to kind of handle, you know, it's, it's hard to stand up, you know, 32 feet above the water and kind of throw yourself off for the first time. You know, it's a, it's a challenge. It's a, it creates a little bit of uh, a higher level of anxiety and stress than maybe you can imagine. <laughs> but, you know, so getting them ready for that is, is a great, part of the process and, that, and that's, uh, that's, that for me is the most fun. Coach, what are the, some of the benefits that you've seen practicing in the new pool? Well, mm. well and not having to you know, spend five hours a week driving back and forth to the Rose Bowl, that's, that's the biggest one. And, and for these guys, I think they appreciate the extra time that they can spend either in school, uh, if it's just watching video or studying or, or doing some work. Uh, that's very helpful for us. For me, what I've seen is, is we are able to get through probably uh, two and a half hours of, of work in the old pool in about 90 minutes at the new pool. So it's really created two things. First of all, it's created extra, extra time for us to do more work, but it's also allowed us to be a lot more efficient with the work that we're doing. So it's, uh, the benefits have been great. And, and certainly, you know, in terms of recruiting, we're, we're, being, uh, you know, we're opening ourselves up to a whole different you know, type of athlete, which is very exciting. 
Well, I would imagine, Laura, I mean, diving is so mental mm -hmm. that it makes it so much easier for you to get used to it being in your surroundings and comfortable that there isn't all the external forces that you have just traveling to and from a facility. Yeah, it's definitely the new facility has made such a difference just during my weekly schedule. Um, you know, the Rose Bowl, it started to feel like home. We went there so much that it was our home, and it actually took it took a while for a speaker to feel like our new home. It kind of felt like we were at a meet, you know, getting used to the new environment. But it's really nice to be able to show off what we do. I mean, 10-meter diving is really impressive, and it's, it's, it's awesome to have the rest of our school finally see that. Right. Now, Coach, you have some philosophies that you really base almost all of your coaching on, don't you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that um, as Laura, I, and Laura's a great example, I think hard work is the first thing you have to be willing to, to come in and, and grind it out. Um, I think when you do enough of that kind of work, a lot of times, you know, you get, you might feel like you get a little lucky, but it's really not. There's always kind of a plan, and, and, and kids who win, you know, do it by design. It's not something that they just fall into, you know, so uh, having that opportunity kind of present itself if the work is right and the process has been good. Uh, in terms of your overall development, a lot of times those opportunities to win doesn't mean it always translates to wins. It just right. means that you have that, that chance is kind of available to you. And again, it doesn't differ that much from a lot of philosophies that a lot of coaches here on campus have. Put in the work, the luck will happen. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Diving actually requires a lot of detail. What are your practices like, Laura? Um, well, we usually start out, like the first 45 minutes is dry land, where we'll do some cardio, and we actually have this warm-up that is completely designed specifically to um, a lot of detail and a lot of the motions that we do on the diving board or on the platform is kind of replicated in that warm-up. You know, keep your abs tight. A lot of um, even something as simple as just an arm circle has to be, you know, relax your shoulders and it has to swing from your, from your wrists. And um, just we do abs and we also have, we make use of a trampoline and a diving board that goes onto a pile of mats. And just lots of repetition, a lot of basic, basic things over and over again in the beginning. And that translates into our, our water practices. How important is it for you to get your athletes to trust you in trying new things? Because obviously you're going to push them to areas that you know that they're capable of, but they may not have that total confidence as of the time you introduce yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's a great question. It, it, I, I feel like um, with, with new kids, it, it generally takes two to three months to kind of get them into that mode where they actually really do start to believe. I mean, if, if we get them to leap a little earlier, a little bit quicker than that, that's great. Um, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of it comes from the, the reality that I don't, I don't think we've ever rolled the dice or take chances with, with our kids. I, I think that, um, you know, when they're ready, you know, we'll talk about it and, and we'll get them ready. And, and when we say, all right, it's time to go, let's give it a try. And then I think they have the confidence and know that, hey, I, I, I can do this. I've had this success. I've never been asked to do anything that was so far out of my range or ability that I, I couldn't, you know, have done it well. Uh, it doesn't always mean the first one goes well, yeah, of course, because right. we you know, have that. But you know, and that's a different that's a different kind of uh, stressor and anxiety that's creating that you know lack of movement. Now, in such an individual sport, how easy or hard is it for you to get the different student athletes wrapped around the team concept? Uh, I, I don't necessarily think that it's hard to get them in line with what we're trying to accomplish as a group. I, I think that each of them, though, requires. Uh, different type of coaching. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, you know, b it being an individual sport, you know, there are going to be certain things I can say to Laura before a dive, and and can't say to other kids, or I can, you know, that that kind of thing. And either if it's a motivating piece during practice, or if it's something outside of practice that really needs to be addressed in order for them to to excel, uh, you know, it, it's not that hard. The the reality is is that we're just a small part of of a bigger program, and and our job is to. Uh, score as many points as possible for, the, for mm. you know, in support of, of swimming and, and what they're doing, and, and that that's something we take very seriously, and, and we've, quite honestly, we've had a, had a, a pretty high level of success with. Well, Laura Wynn, Tom Stebbins, thanks for taking the time to join us. Thanks we so appreciate much. it. Thank, thank you. you. I want to thank Laura Wynn and Tom Stebbins for joining us from the UCLA women's diving team, and thank you for joining us here for UCLA Bruin Talk. For Javrina Sephiroth, I'm Ralph Irvin, and this has been UCLA Bruin Talk, your inside look at UCLA athletics.